Hello, everyone. We are live. The fifth SB YouTube collab underway officially. Um, we had some uh, technical issues before, but I'm glad we worked everything out. Thank you all for being here. And we have a new face in the crowd. It's only one good fit new face, but every new face is a good face. So April, would you mind telling us about your channel and what you do? Oh, uh, well, I have a channel, but I haven't done anything yet, but I plan on doing something about it. Okay. And uh, what's the name of that channel so people can check you out when you do? Uh, I think it's, um, I think it's Sarah. Sarah, okay. Sarah. Well, <laughs> I'll be sure to put the link in the description. And uh, once you start making content, I'm sure we're all here to support you. Oh, thank you. All right, so we're gonna get into this today. This uh, collab is talking about stemming and what, how you use stemming in difficult situations. So let me pull up the questions here. Okay, so first question are, is, uh, what are some of your most common stems and are some of your stems used for specific situations? We'll start off with Jim. Oh boy, we're first. We're yes. first. Okay, well, uh, for JJ, some of his most common stems are, which you'll probably see do, him doing some of them while I'm sitting with him, but he does, rocks his head back and forth. That's probably the one he uses most. Um, he does uh, a lot of rocking back and forth. And, um, you know, he, he, like, he does his hand, waves his hands sometimes. I think he does this when he's excited is he does his hands in front of his face, you know, wiggles his fingers in front of his face. But I think he does that just seems to me like when he's excited about something, he'll do that. Um, he loves to swing, you know, I mean, that's just something that calms him down going out on a swing. And um, let's see, so other things he does for stimming for him anyway, is to lay in his bed or on the couch and, and have his keyboard next to him and just like hit a constant note where just <laughs> while he's moving Mom. back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> easy boy. No. Easy. I love you too. I love you too. Um, anyway, so he, he, um, he, he lays in bed, does that, listen, plays his keyboard while he's listening to his iPad playing, um, playing rain sounds. Just helps calm him down. Um, some those are some of the things he does, you know, to help him with his anxiety. You know, if he feels anxiety coming on or whatever, we'll give him a chewy. Or, um, there's different things we do to help him calm down. We give him his space. Um, you know, because he he uh, does get a little tend to get a little excited sometimes. <laughs> And, uh, you know, we try to help him calm down. Coming home from school this week, anyway, he had a real bad day after school. And we have a, a, a routine, and he lives by routine. Mm -hmm. And his routine is, you know, he gets off the bus, he grabs his backpack, he comes in, lays his backpack down, opens it, pulls out his stuff, including the teacher's notes. And then we read the teacher's notes, and then, you know, then he do whatever. But he got... He was very, he got very violent and very angry. And uh, the second day we came up with a new game plan, which was to, you know, he'll get off the bus and he'll come inside. And at that point, you want to relax, you know, let him decompress first. So gotcha. that's what we did. Um, and that's what we did today. That's what I did today, even though he got off the bus and he wanted <laughs> to open his backpack and get everything out. And he did, and he was very happy. Um, and he knows he did good in school. And he's excited. Yes, it is Friday. And he's excited about getting his, he earns a prize every week for good behaviors at home and school. I didn't count that the, that one day against him, you know. Um, right. We, sh we should have, I don't know. We just learned something, I mean, I, Autism is a learning thing still, you know, for, for sure. me and for Shelly. So we learn now that, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll read him when he gets off the bus. If he looks like, like he didn't have a good day, we're going to play it differently. You know, we'll do the, let's decompress first type idea. And other days, if he comes home, I'll give him the choice. 
does he want to um you know check his his backpack or go relax you know so the relaxing thing seems to work real good for him and he goes upstairs and he stems and he, then he's when he's done he's relaxing come downstairs so he came downstairs just before this began so he's probably gonna will be hungry see he's got this terrible like squealing sound he does when he's not happy about something I mean, it's not necessarily that he's not happy about something but he does it he does it worse when he is upset it's almost like like you know psycho shower scene if everybody nah, ah, ah. <laughs> he does these screams okay. like this like oh gosh ah, no so um so i guess that's it you know i mean well that answers yeah, yeah, you, you answered that very well. So you're saying like when he gets off the bus, you kind of give like get like a visual <laughs> representation yeah. and then make your right. decisions. See how he's doing? Yeah, okay. he's all coming off the bat, bus, all laughing and happy. I say, okay, well, this is you know right, we can pretty much folder, slide yeah. with whatever. But if he gets off, yeah, kind of serious, and then you know maybe something bothers him. Something happened on the bus. Maybe something happened at school before he left. Something maybe the heat because it's been very hot over here in Phoenix. So. Uh, could be a combination of, of all those things. So we just want to make sure, you know, we meet his needs and take care of him to where he's, uh, he's sure. happy when he comes home and doesn't get upset. All right, very good. Other than Monday, we, we've successfully done that. Well, that's I good. Mean, and I hope he has a good rest of the week. Yeah, he will. No school tomorrow, right? All so right. Yeah. Diamond pool. No. Diamond pool tomorrow, right? Okay. So, uh, for me, some of my most common stems are flapping my hands, um, like back and forth very rapidly. I also like to hum along to some songs that I really enjoy that like I listen to. Um, and another one is just like playing those certain songs on repeat um, until I can get like into the, back into my normal self again. Um, also, I kind of like to just kind of shut down when there's way too many things going on and like things are way too complex um so what i do is i just like close my eyes and lean my head back and just try to black out the noise and all that um and those are those are all used for very specific situations um and that's kind of why i asked the question because i know that i have a stem for one situation and another stem for another um, like the hand flapping, for example, that's when I think I'm in trouble, uh, and that like I did something wrong and I'm worried and all that. Um, and then the humming songs is when people are talking to me and like, they're talking too fast or too loud or something. So yeah. Uh, what about you, Alan? What are some certain stems that you do? Um, not sure. I'm not fully sure of all my stems I do. Um... Obviously, I'm a person who don't like loud bangs and that, and uh, yeah, uh, and I kind of duck if I hear a sort of bang go off. Oh, you know. you're sensitive to sound. Yeah, okay. yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I do have something I wish to ask everybody later. Yeah. Uh, oh, to see what well, question to see what people think to see if I'm the only one with autism that. Uh, doesn't like something, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, may I even ask it now? You know. Um, sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, I was wondering, have any of you uh, not liked adverts on television, Pacific adverts? In a lot of specific things annoy me but what specifically about the advert do you mean have you ever seen i'll give an example uh for example here, over here in the uk we've got this awful welshman singing go compare okay so i mean it's just like grating on your ears yeah Mm. Yeah, I can get that. I mean, there's a lot of uh, a, a lot of ads that have like ASMR kind of sounds. ASMR kind of sounds in general, just I do not like them. They just give me the heebie-jeebies. So, I mean, anything containing that 
I think, but I don't, I don't know if it's specifically to advertising. I think maybe ads because you see them over and over. It's like that much more annoying. Like if you, if there's a song you don't like that's being played on the radio all the time, it's like that much worse. Yeah, it's true. Maybe that, maybe it's got something to do with that. I don't, I don't know what I pronounce things. Well, yeah, I, I, uh, I kind of know where you're coming from, Alan. I mean, if I see one more DraftKings commercial, I'm going to lose it. <laughs> uh, I get that. That Yuzu, that President's Choice Yuzu commercial. You guys are in America, so I don't know if you get that, but April maybe gets that on YouTube for the, they have like a new line of products with Yuzu in it. And it's, there's this stupid jingle like, you, 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 zoo, zoo. <laughs> I can't escape it. It's in my head. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man! It gets your attention to what they're trying to get you to, what you the product. Oh no 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 no! I I try to stay as far away from you know I, I try to stay as far away of draft as DraftKings as possible because of that commercial. Like they're supposed yeah. to draw you in, they're just pushing me away right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, it totally worked for me. I, I'm vegan, so there's not a lot in that line that I could buy, but there was like two things and I, I bought them both. <laughs> Lured. But honestly, it's more because I used to be kind of like a like obsessed with Japan and Japanese stuff and, and yuzu is a Japanese citrus fruit that I'd never actually been able to try. And I was like, oh, cool. Cause I had heard of it before. Unlike what the ad says, you probably haven't heard of this. Sorry. Wrong. I have. Thanks. You probably don't see this go compare advert. No. But it's a fat Welshman who's a good opera singer. Don't get me wrong. Uh, he's paid loads of money, and he's like, go compare just to anybody. He just does it, and you know, uh, they took him away for a while. And what guts up my nose is people in the UK complained that they got rid of him and brought him back. Mm, wow. He's there, been... was, uh, there was something like that. I don't remember. It was like a it was like a radio ad, I think, that was like a local radio ad in Canada, and they did the same thing. And I don't remember what it is anymore, but it was really annoying. Oh, I think it was maybe Spence Diamonds. I I don't know, but they had these really annoying uh, ads with this really annoying jingle, and like people hated it and complained, and then they took it out, and then more people were mad that they took it out, so they put it back in. It was the one ad campaign that they ran without it was great. Anyways, uh, uh, I guess kind of got sidetracked a little. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's all right though. Um, but Alan, do you do any other sort of stims? I'm uh, not sure, really. Not sure. Uh, not sure. I know I don't like that sum up advert. I don't know if you in America have seen this sum up advert. No, we haven't. I I think that's just like in the UK. Yeah, it's a UK thing. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and basically they're talking about I got this credit card and you know, and then you get some idiots going Ooh, like that. <laughs> Yeah, but it's all over London Underground and all that, and it's just a new advert that's taken off, and uh, it's just like annoying as go compare. And you know, there are a few other adverts as well. I mean, I'm going to be starting my own website about ban getting annoying TV adverts banned, basically. Banned. If I had much of a law, I must admit, I would put a blanket ban on all adverts and just have television without adverts. And okay. Well, okay, Alan, um, do, do you have any stimming in like, um, like underground stations? Because I know a lot of people on the spectrum don't like, like train stations and all that. I'm uh, not sure. Bit nervous on the escalator going down. Right. Do you do anything to calm yourself? I sort of breathe and just take it easy and walk down the escalator. Yeah. Gotcha. Hmm. Okay. Well, thank you, Ellen. Uh, what about you, Quigley? What are your, some of your uh, specific stems? Um, so uh, I find like a lot of the stuff that I do, I have, uh, I spend a lot of conscious effort in my youth figuring out things that I can do that nobody would ever notice that I'm doing. 
Um, so there's a lot of, uh, I, I do stuff with my tongue in my mouth or like chew on the inside of my cheeks or actually I chew on my lips sometimes that's, that's um, noticeable. Uh, but, you know, all sorts of things like, uh, I shake my legs uncontrollably, like almost all the time. And I've heard that that also might be tied to ADD. Mm -hmm. um, but I do that a lot. Uh, and then as far as like specific stuff goes, when I get nervous or stressed out, I do a lot of like um, holding and like squeezing myself, especially my arms. I'll do a lot of this. Or, I'm like, sorry, this. did you say folding? holding and oh, like holding okay. like i'm, I'm kind of trying to demonstrate it where i'll, I'll kind of do like a lot of rubbing with like a lot of intense pressure um on any part of my body really but usually like here or my like my knees like right above my knees gotcha. um and then also kind of like you said alex where if i get really overwhelmed i'll sort of just totally shut down and i'll i'll go like fetal position and I'll cover my ears and close my eyes and may have to start rocking back and forth depending on how bad it is. The other, uh, like a couple of weeks ago, I got hit by a car when I was riding my bike. Yeah. And um, it wasn't like, I wasn't that hurt. Like I was in pain, but I have a hard time feeling pain as it is. And so I was mainly in shock and the guy got out of his car and started yelling at me and then some other random people pulled up on the side of the road and they started yelling at him that he was yelling at me and i just couldn't handle anything and i curled up in a ball and on the ground in front of this guy's car and started crying and rocking back and forth and yeah. that yeah <laughs> yeah yeah I, I didn't see that video and i i really hope you're doing better with that um because I knew you weren't in a very good place. Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been rough. It it really like shut down a lot of the progress that I felt that I was making because right. Yeah, it was just oh, it was really draining. Um, yeah, and it still yeah. is now. I have like physiotherapy twice a week, and yeah, definitely. And uh, April, uh, what are some of your specific stems and do you use them for specific situations? Yeah, I um, like I heard uh, hear from people like when, mainly when they're talking about, you know, like, why do you do that with your fingers or you rub your hands and stuff? So uh, I like Quigley. I, I chew my lip a lot. Um, surprised I still have a lip. And I rock, and um, so I heard someone once say that they rock side to side when they're happy and forward when they're nervous, but I just noticed I just rock in general a lot. And um, yeah, I play the same song over and over and over again. I watch the same movie every single day because um, it helps me calm down. Right. And um yeah, Let's see, and I and I pull my hair when I'm nervous. If you don't mind me asking, what movie do you watch? <laughs> Joker, 2019. Okay. Yeah. The the Joaquin Phoenix. <laughs> yes. Gotcha. He's, he's my favorite, and everything in my house is him. <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for that. Um, so the second question, and, and we're gonna start off with Jim here. Um. So Jim, how have JJ's stems helped him overcome difficult situations? Well, they've definitely helped him uh, calm down. When he, you know, like I said, I mean, he he will get a lot of anxiety, and you know, when he is able to just stem, he he's able to calm down. So I mean, it it just helps him. Um, JJ is, is a, a guy who will sometimes act first and then think about what he, you know, instead, instead most people will think first and then act. He acts first and then thinks. So a lot of times it's, it's not a good outcome, but he just needs, when he, when he, when he gets over anxious or whatever, he just stems to calm himself down. It just, that's, that's JJ. I mean, there's, Nothing too much more than that. Um, it just it just helped 
helps him get out of those difficult situations he's in just by stimming. Um, really, that's that's about it. I wish we could ask him. Um, yeah. JJ? Hey, buddy. Jay? Do you feel, when you, whenever you, you feel like a, a rough situation and you stem, does it make you feel better? Yes. It does? I'm not sure if he's really answering or he probably would have just said yes because it, it sounded like a question I asked him. Yeah. Do you like stimming? Do you like stimming? What's, what's a stimming? Show him a stem that you do. What do you do? Do you know? What do you do? Does his thumbs up? <laughs> yeah. I don't think he really, he really knows, but yeah, stimming is huge with him. You know, it helps him for sure. Gotcha. Something that he, he does all the time. I mean, it's almost, it's almost a constant where he's always moving, doing something, you know? So, but he, I mean, he stems even like if we're cruising in the car, he'll be sitting there just moving back and forth. Just something he always does. So, but if he's like I said, if he's, feeling troubled or something's wrong it, it definitely helps calm him down all right that's all well, i, I really you. have i have no real Dang. answers or anything to it yeah. but... well thank you for that um for me stems have helped me out of situations because um like when i when I get anxiety, I get it like really bad. And when I get it really bad, then there's some like health problems that start to come up. Um, so I need to like stemming is necessary for me to not have that. Um, and when I don't have that, um, I, I basically realize that like, hey, pretty much everything can be overcome, uh, but not like but not, not my health, like my health has to be a top priority. Um, so when I find that extra motive to relax, um, that can help me like get through those situations and take it one step at a time until it's solved. All right, uh, what about you, Alan? Um, well, all I know is I, when I get nervous or anxious, I so I rub my hair, play with my hair, and sort of like I do that, I guess, to calm myself down. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. Hmm. And how does that help you get out of uh, tough situations or through them? Yeah. Uh, well. Uh, it depends on what situations we're on about, really, you know. Uh... Yeah, um, so basically, when you're in the park and you get sensory overload, um, yeah. how does stimming help you get through that? I don't know. I've not noticed that in myself, really, you to be honest. You haven't noticed anything? You know. You, you said you hadn't noticed anything? No, no, I haven't noticed how I deal with that. Obviously, deal with it in a way that relaxes me and calms me down when, you know, yeah. Definitely, yeah. Well, yeah, well it's annoying. It's annoying TV adverts. I just swear and shout at them and, you know. Okay. I found a way of, uh, well, I've resolved that little problem, you know, myself. Good, good. That's good. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. Well, um, def yeah, definitely the, the best of luck to you um, in continuing all that. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> hopefully you'll be able to, like, eventually find out, like, what exactly it is that yeah. you do. And, like, you can make that conscious decision in the future. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, so what about you, Quigley? Future, yeah, yeah, well, it is, you know. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, I mean, I think that that you, uh, you like everybody basically has, has said it already, which is that it, it can help calm you down a lot and get you through stuff. And I, I find it interesting, actually, like I, I've been watching, um, 
videos and stuff on body language analysis. And oh, that, Derek has, Jake. that has sort of led me to realize that uh, individual actions that that you would consider to be a stim, like like what I do when I'm like rubbing my body parts and stuff when I'm nervous and, mm -hmm. um, you know, touching your mouth and that kind of stuff. They're actually really common things that neurotypical people do as well. And it's called, they, they call it a uh, self-soothing behavior. And right. so stimming, uh, it's, it's, it's self stimulatory behavior. Right. But it's also, um, known you know to professionals as a way of self-regulating and and self-soothing so it's i just i think it's interesting that the difference isn't really so much in the individual actions as much as the the exaggerated or repetitive nature of those actions in um in autistic people how you know it's like it it becomes a lot more obvious right because i'm watching these videos of, of neurotypical people and it's there's somebody who's spent a great amount of time researching all of these little tells, all of these little things, and it's because the people do it like subtly once, mm -hmm. whereas an autistic person is like repeating those kinds of actions over and over. And I just find it interesting. Maybe it's like, you know, because it's harder for us to calm down and because things are so much more overwhelming, like we just need to engage in that behavior to a much higher degree to, to help us calm down. Absolutely. Um, out of curiosity, are you watching Derek Van Shake? Uh, no, I, I haven't. Um, the, channel, the channel mainly that's like the actual body language analysis that I was watching is called Observe, I believe. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Um, well, yeah, Derek uh, does pretty much a, a bunch of the same things. Um, and it's funny because what we do, um, neurotypicals do when they're lying, uh, usually. And that's something that, well, it's something that's really interesting. Um, and I might have to do a video on, on, on body language and like how we're not lying, but they are. And it's just like, yeah. it, it's really, it's a really interesting study. There's, a, there's actually a really interesting case of uh, an autistic guy who was, he, him and his mother went out on a boat on like kind of a deep sea tuna fishing thing. Mm -hmm. And they found him eight days later in his dinghy because the boat had sank and his mother um, unfortunately didn't make it. And people were accusing him of setting it up and killing his mother and purposely spending eight days on a dinghy hoping to get saved mm -hmm. like it's just absolutely ridiculous and they what, think what, now was it because because, it because when he was interviewed uh -huh. he seemed like oh he's not emotional oh he doesn't like he's acting weird and it's like he's autistic wow yeah wow yeah all right that's gonna be my next video <laughs> i have to i have to do that yeah wow yeah there's a whole there's a whole bunch more to the story um if, if you want to look into it i'm sure it'll be easy enough to find for sure I can, yeah. I, can, I can even send you a link okay yeah i'd love that link all right uh so what about you april oh what what's the question yeah i'll get it it's um how like how have you used your stems to overcome difficult situations um let me see. I don't really know. Um, I don't really know. I just, uh, I just know I do it. I know I do it a lot. Like I'm a lot aware, aware now. I wasn't aware like in like a little while ago, but like I am a lot more aware now, but um, I more hear it from people. They just asked me about it and probably like the most thing I get asked about is um, why am I touching everything or rubbing materials and yeah. why do I rub my hands and uh, why do I rub <laughs> like quickly so why do I rub my body all the time specifically my chest <laughs> it's because it's, it's a stim I can't help it and, it and it comforts me like when I'm in bad situations it comforts me so I bought okay. a jacket, actually, a really fluffy jacket for the winter, because um, when I'm touching it, then 
they were like, oh, what are you doing? And I'd be like, oh, I like the material, right? So mm-hmm. it helps. So yeah, I suppose most of my stems are for comfort. And then sometimes it's because like, I'm really happy, like I'm enjoying myself, so. Definitely, yeah. Um, I put butt in and say, I've done the exact same thing with get butt in. <laughs> Wait, with what, with what, Quigley? Oh, like fuzzy clothing, like yeah. Yeah. soft, and so you have an excuse to be like rubbing yourself all the time. Yeah. For sure, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I've gotten to the point where I don't even need excuses, like I just own it, uh, but, but that's taken a while. Like, the, like, I'm with you, April, I like to touch everything, yeah. just because like, my, I, I don't know, it has something to do with like my hands and like, how they're connected to the brain it's really weird yeah yeah well I think for me personally like I developed a lot of ways to sort of hide it because I went 30 years without knowing that I was autistic I right. thought you know that I was just weird so I was trying to not be weird and you know so I had to sort of strategize ways to still do these things but also not have anybody notice mm-hmm because I yeah, had no have, Well, that must have been a lot of stress on you, you know? Like, that must have taken a lot of energy. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Social interaction has always been extremely... Uh, exhausting. Yeah, exhausting. Definitely. Yeah. Well, all right. Um, well, we're having a great show so far, and uh, we still got one question left. So the question is, have you ever been questioned about your stims? And if so, what was your response? So I guess for Jim, the question is, uh, has JJ ever been questioned about his stims and what was your response? Yeah, I mean, it has happened a couple times. One time somebody wrote on a comment on my vlog, you know, like, what is he doing type of thing. And then uh, most recently is last Sunday, we were at a family member's house, for Father's Day. Um, and JJ was swimming and he was in the pool, you know, just stimming in the pool. So they're kind of asking about it a little bit. And I just told them, you know, it just helps him, you know, uh, calm down. He just in there, it just, it's calming for him. He's stimulating and they wanted to know what it was. And I, I kind of told them like, do they ever like hit their fingers on a desk or click a pen? Or, you know, like me, I mean, I am real bad. My leg just constantly goes. I mean, I catch myself doing it when I was here, sitting here, my leg just bounces. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, yeah. for me, like when I lay down, my, my foot just always goes. It's just a weird thing for me personally. I don't know why that happens, but um, it's just something I do. I guess it helps calm me down too. But that's how I kind of explained it to the person on the blog too to have them understand, you know, because when they, they can, they can hear it in a way that they can understand because everybody does some sort of stimulation thing for themselves, you know, whatever it is. Um, and, you know, that, that's what I say. I just, I just tell him he's, you know, he's, it's a stimulation is as if you're clicking a pen or pounding your fingers on a desk or whatever, same kind of thing, except his is more noticeable. So, that's what that's how I explain it. Well, that's uh, that's very good. That's a very good explanation. I mean, that's basically how it is. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I've never been really <laughs> about my stems. More so, called out on it, um, especially. Um, so you know, I do that. Um, I do that humming along when uh, people are talking to me, and like they go really fast. And uh, unfortunately, I take orders at a fast food restaurant, <laughs> so so uh, I get mm-hmm. over with that really easily, and I have to do that. Um, and uh, my my boss a couple of times has actually called me out on it, um, but I've uh, I mean I've just responded by saying like, hey, this is an accommodation that I need to have. Like I'm not going to be able to do my job without this, um, and. So far, we've been able to work out a system. Um, and yeah, yeah, we've been able to work out a system and it's all been good. But in general, um, people kind of just get annoyed when I do that rather than confused. So, 
What about you, Alan? Yeah, it's all right, really. Uh, yeah, I've never been asked about me stemming before, uh, you know, so I'm not sure, really. Hmm. You've never been asked? No, no. I, hmm. I don't think I've been, no. That's interesting. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm wondering if that's like a thing in the UK where like people don't really notice that stuff. Um, but here in the US and Canada, they like people do. Um, I think we're, I don't know if we're a lot more aware. Well, not more aware, but just like, yeah, go ahead quickly. I feel like the UK, and I mean, I don't live there, so you could probably answer this a lot better, Alan, but there's like, there's this sort of um, pretense of like, mind your own business and like don't don't really like bring up other people's issues and like that's their thing and and they need to deal with it and I'm just gonna go over here and it's like polite right because you don't want to be impolite and and bring up like point out like why are you doing that because it's rude right I don't know maybe that's just like the the impression that I have having never been there Are you there, Alan? Yeah, I'm oh, here. Did you hear what she said? I think I got a little bit of the gist of it. Yeah. Okay. So, so what what do you think of that? Yeah, maybe just like people they don't like to point it out because they're trying to be nice and they're trying to be polite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds more like it. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, I want to be a Brit then. <laughs> Because in America, it's really rough here. Like, people are way too judgmental. Yeah. Pro probably in Canada, too, right, Quigley? <laughs> yeah, it, it's definitely the same. Um, I have I have some stories, but, I mean, we, well, we can wait till my turn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it is your turn now, if, uh, unless, Alan, you have anything else to say. No. Uh. Okay. All right, go ahead, Craigley. Um, well, so for me, uh, a lot of the time, like if anybody ever noticed that I was doing anything, um, aside from the leg shaking, because that is unavoidable and people always notice that. Mm -hmm. And most of the time people just say, can you stop that? It's annoying. Um, and I try to. Uh, it's because it's like as soon as I consciously notice that I'm shaking my leg I'm like oh and I'll stop doing it and then maybe I'll I'll start again when I'm not paying attention but um, that's the only one uh, that people ever really like consistently call out other than that it's usually like if anybody ever noticed that I was doing anything out of the ordinary it would be like what are you doing why are you doing that and I'd be like oh I don't know and I would immediately stop and never do it again <laughs> at least not in front of anyone um and so I think a couple example I used to chew on pens a lot uh or really anything but especially pens and pencils but the number of times that I had a pen explode in my mouth and just like get ink all over the inside of my mouth because I was chewing on it were too many so when I was um well actually when I was 15 but I had to wait till I was 16 I decided to get my tongue pierced um, because I wanted to have something inside my mouth that I could stim. I didn't realize it was stimming at the time, but I just knew that I liked playing with stuff inside of my mouth. So I got my tongue pierced and my gym teacher, actually, it was my gym teacher, uh, made fun of me relentlessly for getting my tongue pierced. And I explained, I'm like, oh no, I just did it because I like to play with stuff inside my mouth and you know, I just wanted to do it. And, and he was implying that I had it, that I had gotten it done for other reasons. And I'm like, no, really? Like, and, and every time I saw him in the hallway, because when you first get your tongue pierced, you, it's a little swollen and you have a bit of a lisp. So every time I would pass him in the hallway, he would say, Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Because I couldn't say it. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Um, and then I guess the other really prominent one that I remember is um now I was actually a little bit intoxicated at the time which is why I was doing this in front of people um but we were standing outside and it was winter and I had these gloves that had this like fur lining so it was really soft and we were standing on the sidewalk in downtown Toronto and um 
I forget exactly what we're doing, but my friends were having a conversation I wasn't exactly part of. I was standing to the side and I started um, using the handlebar of a bicycle that was just parked on the road to like take the glove on and off with my hand because it, it felt nice, right? And my friends noticed and they turned around and they started accusing me of uh, pleasuring the handlebar. <laughs> And I literally never lived this that down till I figured out that I was autistic like 20 years later and went back to my friend and was like, you're a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> but we're still friends. And it was a joke when I, when I, when I said you're a jerk. <laughs> oh, that's, so, that's funny. That's cool. Cool, yeah. Well, um, well, that's interesting. And uh, I'm glad you were able to set up those boundaries and like give that proper response and um, kind of show those people up. Um, yeah, well, I mean, as soon as I figured out why I was doing that right. and like, because they didn't believe me. I'm like, no, I was just rubbing my hand on the inside of my glove. And they're like, why would you be doing that? They didn't understand, right? Like, why would you do that? Why would you be rubbing soft fur with your hand? That's a weird thing to do. So it just made more sense to them for some reason that it made sense to, that I would be pleasuring a bike handle. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like a handlebar. I played in the bath, but okay. <laughs> I don't know. Like I said, we'd all been drinking, so. I got you. Well, thank you for that, April. I appreciate oh. that. Oh, I also, I just wanted to point out that the way that JJ's laying on the counter there just reminds me of myself when I was a kid. I was constantly crawling up oh, on and laying on the counters. Same. And I, I've never known anyone else to do that. And I just thought that was great. <laughs> awesome. That's a JJ thing to do. He always does that. Lays up there and relaxes. He usually hangs his chimes up there and, and just watches chimes go sometimes. Yeah, Can I you... I don't know why I just used to do it all the time. All right. Well, the final question goes to April, and then we're going to end up the show here. Okay. That's a question. Would you like me to repeat the question? Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, oh, open the wrong app. Um, have you ever been questioned about your stems? If so, what was your response? Yeah, I've been questioned a lot. I've also been corrected a lot. But um, now, like, when I'm faced with someone and they don't want me doing a certain thing, I just say to them now, like, I have this new thing that I've been doing, and it's just, like, uh, like this is just something that I do to comfort myself, you know? Like, because I'm not going to explain stems because normally, like, this is work setting and stuff. So I just say this is something that I do to calm myself. But if it irritates you, then you can go. Because uh, I can't, like, I'm not about to stop. It, it's actually comforting me. So unless you want me to lose my, <laughs> my cool, because sometimes I get really upset, then this is how I bring myself down. So that's just like, that's it. Plus, you know, like in my life too, I've been corrected a lot. And uh, psychiatrists and stuff decided that they were going to say that I had BPD, which is not true. Um, and Children's Aid Society knew that I had a diagnosis of autism, but I didn't know that. So I, uh, I was trying to constantly um, cover for, for all my, uh, my behaviors. Can I and, ask, um, um, sorry, um, I was just wondering why did they not tell you that um, if they knew? They didn't tell me anything. Um, there was, I never knew anything. Psychiatrists, doctors, they all didn't tell me anything. Um, I just thought that I had super dark, strange behaviors and like didn't realize that there was an explanation for it. And then um, after I got diagnosed a second time, um, also I had speech therapists and everything. So, you know, there was times when I brought that up too, about the fact that I lost my, my language uh, mm -hmm. when they were asking me my name and I was telling them what my name was and I thought I was saying what my name was. And then they were saying, that's not your name. And what is she saying? And I started making things up. Anyways, it is it's still a little bit upsetting because uh, I just got recently diagnosed again. This is the second time. And now I've had to, like, now I'm really like learning all my behaviors and um, I'm not, I'm not uh, gonna talk to, like, I'm not gonna discuss things with people about how they're discomforted because I have a theory that if you're uh, doing this kind of stuff for comfort and you don't suffer 
from any any of these things like you don't have any troubles in crowds and you don't have any trouble keeping your vocabulary uh going then you know you really don't have a say so when i'm losing my my uh speech or i'm calming myself then i feel like this is something that like is good mm-hmm. because it's something like we have a solution you know to to whatever's going on and and it can help us uh like what you said quickly self regulate and yeah. help bring us down so we're okay again totally agree i feel like like if you're not bought, like most stims are not a, in like intrusive like yeah we're not doing anything that is overtly like bothering anybody for the most part like i don't know yeah. i mean sure you know some people do some things that are loud or whatever right but like if you can, if you're doing something and you're not actually bothering anybody then like so don't look at me if it bothers you that i'm yep. you know making some kind of movement or go in the other room like there's there's no reason if if you're not hurting somebody that somebody should tell you to stop doing whatever you're doing you know? that's the other thing i say oh i'm sorry is that hurting you i actually say that people will sometimes will say no it's just annoying i don't care if it's annoying i asked you if it's hurting you is it affecting your life yeah because without it it's affecting my life a- absolutely well april that's a great job of setting your boundaries um and really i think I, I really don't think that uh, keeping secrets from you like that is really legal. Um, but anyways, uh, that's a great job at like knowing messed yourself up. and it's keeping messed. yourself. It, you Excuse me. Hmm? Uh, Sorry, go ahead, Alan. Yeah, I, yeah, Alex, uh, yeah, excuse me. I want to tell you guys that I'm looking forward. I'm seeing my new partner tomorrow and uh, we've chatted on text message for many many weeks now and uh you know and uh yeah i told him my bad experience has been cheated on and uh looking forward to seeing him soon tomorrow well uh we wish you and him the best alan yes good luck alan awesome nice good luck. yeah good luck with everything we hope that goes well and um yeah i hope everything goes smoothly buddy um yeah. But yeah, April, uh, that's a great job recognizing yourself. And uh, hopefully a lot of people can draw inspiration and advice from that. I hope so. I hope so. All right, guys. Well, this was a pretty short collab, but uh, we got, we covered a lot of information. And yeah. everyone watching this, be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video for more <laughs> collabs to come out. Um, I'll say bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. See you guys later. Bye, JJ.